Acts of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the utmost part of the earth for your possession. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you something? Jesus did not only bring grace. That's, what, that's not what the Bible said. The Bible said Jesus brought grace and truth. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So in the kingdom, there are two types of grace. There is common grace and there is uncommon grace. The common grace are free gifts. They are given out of God's generosity and benevolence. Even in nature, we have them like sunlight, like rainfall. You know, even witches have rainfall in their house. And it's God's generosity and mercy that is spread to everybody. Salvation is given to everyone. All they have to do is to believe and turn away from their sin. But uncommon grace are not given to everyone. They are given to people who obey God. They are given in response to obedience or sacrifice. If everything is the same, everybody can get everything free. Then why am I laboring in the kingdom? Why am I sacrificing? Then why would there be the judgment seat of Christ if the rewards would be equal? There are things that God has reserved for those that obeyed him. You look at what he told Abraham. By myself I have sworn. In blessing I will bless thee. And at the end he mentions why. Because you have obeyed me. They are given to people who chose to share in the fellowship of his son. Let me, let me, let me say this ladies and gentlemen. Because this is a dominion conference. And we are winding down now. Salvation is by grace. Dominion is through obedience and sacrifice. It was even lost in the garden through disobedience. It's dominion through obedience. Why are many people not walking in it? Look at, for example, Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Okay, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If you are to read from verse 15, he said, well, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adop adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He's talking about our salvation and the fact that we are God's children. Verse 16 said, For the spirit is a bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So, in terms of being God's children, no problem. Salvation is free. It's by grace. But verse 17, now and 18, now says something else. 17 said if children then we are heirs and heirs of god and join heir with christ then he puts a condition if why is it that some of these inheritance are not in your hand if if i know you're in the family but there is an if when it comes to inheritance if if what if we suffer with him so that what will happen that we might be glorified with him another translation said that we might reign with him when it comes to getting saved and joining the family free but when it comes to occupying the throne there is an if when it comes to reigning if if you want to just enter the family and be a member no problem free just believe but if you are going to experience dominion and rule with him there is an if. You have to share in the fellowship of his suffering. Please, there is a place Paul was writing this to Timothy and he made it very clear. If we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. Pull, up, pull it up, let them see it. It is a faithful saying. Everybody, you can take this to the bank. There are some of those statements that when the Bible makes, sometimes they, they said verily, verily. It, it means that God is backing this with double assurance. It's an oath. You, you can be, have guarantee on this. This is a faithful saying. If we die with him, we will live with him. Verse 12 said, If we suffer, what will happen? We shall reign with him. But if we deny him, did he say if you deny him, he will accept you? He said, I suffer, count all things but loss. That I might gain Christ. And what shocks me is what these men want to get in exchange for all this sacrifice. You don't see them saying that I might get a car. So I can get 
what every time i touch this subject it triggers something in the heart of god I, I don't know what it is there is something that we have lost again in this end last days the material side of life have removed our understanding of true worlds we have lost the understanding of what true wealth is we are now talking prosperity and yet that material prosperity is poverty the true wealth are absent is poverty you have all the cars have all the houses you have nothing he said all that was gained to me i count them but dung. when i compare all those from again i look at them like excreta cow excreta like manu compared to the excellency of the knowledge of jesus christ my lord of whom i suffer the loss of all things that i might gain christ men that have this understanding there is nothing they cannot give god there is nothing they cannot drop on the altar because it's nothing it's nothing there is something there is a higher value that they are pursuing you taught us apostle you said that sacrifice is giving up something of value in exchange for something of higher value is giving up something that i love in exchange for something that money cannot buy me god has no problem lifting people he has no problem god's problem is solving you you want him to solve your problem what he wants to solve is you the unfaithfulness in you the greed in you the pride in you the arrogance in you the selfishness in you you want God to solve your problem God wants to solve you first if you let God solve you first he will solve all the other things that are troubling you the end of spiritual warfare is dead to self there is nothing else to fight a dead man there is nothing else